So with that I say, to God be the glory for this day. Yes, ma'am. The scripture will be coming from 1 John chapter 4, starting at the 7th verse. My interpretation will be different. The reading will be different. I'm coming from the New King James Version. So when you have it, say amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Will you bow your heads with me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, I come to you this day, an empty vessel ready to be filled with your words, oh God. God, hide me behind the cross, Heavenly Father, that men will see you and not me, oh God. God, if I be too, if I become too high, oh God, I know that you will lower me, God. God, I trust that I'm walking only in your confidence, God, not of mine, Heavenly Father. So as I begin to preach this word, oh God, I rest in you, Heavenly Father. Let all nervousness leave, Heavenly Father. Let me speak and preach the way you desire me to bring forth this word in this house today. God, in my prayers that healing and deliverance will go forth in this place. That your people would be set free to live a life more holy and righteous for you, O oh God. So God, with this prayer, your servant's prayer, I rest in you, Heavenly Father. These things and all things I pray in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This month's theme is the gospel according to Mary J. Blige. As I pondered this topic of relating a secular song to a gospel theme, I thought it to be quite an interesting and unique task at hand. First, I desired to check out Mary beyond the artist and look into Mary the person. As I embarked on some research about her life, Mary was born in the Bronx in 1971 to Cora and Thomas Blige. Mary endured a childhood of violence, alcohol, and drugs. Her mom, Cora, was a nurse who struggled with alcoholism, who was abused by Mary's dad. Thomas, a war veteran who suffered from PTSD, who was a jazz musician who played the bass. Her childhood was split between Savannah, Georgia, and New York. Mary shared in several interviews that her mom and her, and her had to move to New York to escape the physical and mental abuse of the father. Unfortunately, the move, the move placed them in another war zone. The projects in Yonkers were filled with others dealing with the same situations and circumstances that they were running from. Mary was sexually abused at the age of five. Her mom was raising a child without the help of her father. And like many working single moms, they have to depend on others for help. It's so hard to find people that we can trust. As she got older, Mary found solace in church and in music. She said she loved being in the church for it was a place of refuge. She felt loved and needed there. She felt like she was safe and would never be hurt. Her favorite hymn of the song of the church was Lord, help me to hold out until my change come. Unfortunately, in her early years, the time when teens are the most curious in life, where we begin to see life, to see what life is about, and are trying to discover where we want to go. She dropped out of school and church. And church. 
Mary fell into the pitfall of low self-esteem, peer pressure, and delved into alcohol, drugs, and sex. Do that sound familiar to any one of you? Possibly have you made those same choices at such an innocent type stage in life, critical time in your life. At the age of 17, Mary was discovered after a recording company heard a karaoke tape that she made. She had already dropped out of high school, so with that choice, she chose to pursue her singing career. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God. In 1992, she dropped her first album entitled The 411, one of my favorite albums, which included songs entitled Reminisce, Real Love, and You Remind Me. I know y'all bought to that many a times at home, in clubs, wherever you may have been. And that's just to name a few of the hits on her album. Here, a young woman who was already faced with many adversities, now thrown in the spotlight, being admired and adored by many who had no clue that her life was continually spiraling out of control. Now, with a new set of situations and circumstances and new demons to face, surrounded by people who didn't have her best interests at hand, only looking out to what they can get. At the same point, she finally met someone who caused her to evaluate and address her demons. That was her, another pivotal point in Mary's life. She found, what, she found what she thought she needed in him, someone to love her and someone she could love. Mary began to change in a more positive and spiritual direction. This gentleman she married in 2003, and of course, life happens. Everything doesn't end in a fairy tale ending, and they separated in 2016. Throughout her career, you can hear her passion, cries, strength, and struggles, as well as the victories and the defeats. You felt the agony and even the hope she was feeling. She expressed her joy and pain. She sang of beautiful days filled with the sun, as well as the dark, cloudy, rainy ones. Her albums are many document documentaries of a woman facing many obstacles and subsequently never giving up. A reporter once said, her not so perfect pitch that mirrors her not perfect truth, her life manifests as she is, and what you hear is what you get. And if you know anything about Mary, she truly expressed her life through her soul. Many of us can relate to or empathize with the trials and tribulations of life she faced. During this journey, we will face, we all will face adversities one time or another. And remember, it's not if, it's when. So throughout, throughout many of our, her songs, while going through the trials of life, she sang of hope, trust, and faith in God. Most of all, she sang about love. Like Ms. Blige, we all have to come under the understanding that the source of love is our faith in the Son. I'll say that again. That the source of, our, of love is our faith in the Son. There's nothing that love cannot overcome. The scripture tells us, love one another. How did God's love change you? Take a few moments and just reflect of those dark times and places you were, where God found you right there where you needed him. Yeah. Have you forgotten how his love brought you out of some of the darkest times of your life? Do you realize how powerful love is? Yeah. Love can turn this world upside down. Yeah. Let it start with you. God's desires is that we ought to love one another. Put away envy, strife, anger, jealousy, unforgiveness, bitterness. Let it all go. It is not worth your time. Exchange all those bags that take you out of the will of God for just that one bag, love. Love covers a multitude of sins. It's in the book. If we can love a God we have not seen or can physically touch, why is it seemingly so hard 
for us just to simply spread God's love. The world tells us, the word tells us, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. There's no love more real than the love of Christ. And we all know he is the epitome. There's no greater love other than our Lord and our Savior and our King, Jesus Christ. We all ought to know and tell his story. We owe him all, and at least we can do, or you can do, is spread the love that saved you. If you have confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, you have a responsibility to spread God's love. Remember, God's love doesn't pick and choose. Romans tells us there is no partiality of God with God. Everyone deserves to receive God's love. God did not command us to like each other. The word is love one another. What better way to honor God than to spread the word of his love? We ought to walk just like our risen king. Let, let's be the examples that our Savior still lives with, within each one of us. My first sermon was about fire starting. We are God's Jeremiah's. His word should be like fire shut up in our bones. There's a testimony in everyone's story. When you walk in love, God will exceed your expectations. We put God in a box. But if we look to what he desires for our lives, it will blow your mind. If you can see yourself just the way God sees you, you will be at all already. So we just, just thank God for covering us. Yeah. There's no love. There's nothing like walking in his love. Yeah. His words ought to bring that joy that makes you want to walk in love. We serve a God that is attentive to our needs. Yeah. We can talk to him at any time of the day. No matter where you may be at, walking down the street, at on your job, in your home, and even at the times of adversity. He holds us through the tough times, guides us when we need direction. Most of us have been back, and we're still standing. We still have our joy and our peace. We don't look like what we've been through. And it ain't that black don't crack, it's that God preserves. He is a keeper, a way maker, healer, deliverer, sustainer, doctor in the courtroom, a Lord Released. 
as a mystery of the unknown manifested pristine clear, a positive message of truth entered my ear. Now across my face is a brand new smile with a newly revealed meaning of the destined child, a message of hope being released from my heart, and I am overwhelmed with the dedication to do my part. All I ever wanted was to be as I once was, unbounded, somehow it got all twisted, and before long, sounded as though life was continuous, a continuous connive, thrive, die, drive, choking out the simple joy of just being alive. And now I am filled with the love and I sing a love song, a song for yesterday, today, tomorrow, and beyond. And my new prayer is, thank you God for setting me free and thank you God for giving me back me. So like Mary, let's declare today that we will unshut our eyes. We will open our eyes that got the God that so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, that's some real love. So stop searching. You have someone who can, have, and will satisfy your every need. Yeah. He keeps you through your storms. With time, you have realized that you have a love that's so true. Y'all yeah. know the song, Real Love.
Y'all know the song? Yeah. I'm not gonna shed no tears. No, I'm not gonna cry. Cause you're not worth my tears. So bring your sickness, death, finances, while you're walking in faith, being blessed by God himself. For the love of Christ will wipe all your tears away. Yeah. His love will take care of you. Yeah. So I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to shed no tears. No, I'm not going to cry. Come on, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 